Welcome to the Donahue Group. We're delighted that you're joining us for another fun-filled half hour of conversation regarding issues of great interest, uh, at least to some of us. Uh, joining me today, I'm going to start with on my direct right uh, this time, an itinerant social studies teacher. <laughs> gypsy. <laughs> a gypsy uh, social studies teacher from the Sheboygan Area School District, Ken Risto, a social studies guy. A more respectable sort, uh, Tom Paneski, <laughs> professor at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan, teaching math. Cal Potter, our uh, former state senator and former um, DPI, assistant superintendent of public libraries. I'm always so happy when I can get that all out. And well, it actually is longer than that. I had eight different bureaus, so you just oh. picked on one of them. So keep it, it's that simple. <laughs> I'll never get that. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I practice law here over and over again in the, in the city of Sheboygan. Um, we're talking about local issues today, and we've got uh, quite a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, we um, are uh, just before the April election, about two weeks away, I think, um, reminding voters Tuesday, April 4th, uh, is voting day, and at least for now, you don't have to show a picture ID, so you can just come and, and vote as you will. Um, but uh, we bring have a huge electric bill with you, and bring a huge electric bill. With you. Prove, your, <laughs> prove where you live. A lot of <laughs> angry people at the polls. <laughs> we have to live in Wisconsin, and cost us four hundred dollars in utility bills. Um, we have a bunch of each and every district has a contested race. Um, the primary has winnowed the candidates down. I just want to run through the list because I think it's an interesting group with some interesting issues. And I'm looking for predictions, prognostications, to the extent that you're comfortable. First district, um, Alderman Manny is being challenged by a Patrick Gillette. Uh, Manny, I think, is coming back for his third term, if I'm not mistaken. Tom, you're a District I, 1 I would, uh, resident. Yep, that's correct. What do you think? Who's going to win? Oh, Manny. All right. And is it the power of the incumbency? or I think so, yeah. I, I, I'm going to tell, if you're listening, Manny, you've yet to come to my door. <laughs> <laughs> you've yet to put a piece of literature on my door. Okay. And that does influence me. All right. <laughs> but he's got two weeks. you got two weeks. Yeah. Unfortunately, by the time he sees it, the election will be over. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. can say I told you so. so. <laughs> In the McLaughlin group, the predictions come at the end of the show. So. We're doing it right, <laughs> right up front. front. Like <laughs> and, and we'll keep, you know, I actually did enter a, a don donation. I put a donation in the office, donation uh, basket regarding the NCAA basketball tournament. And I'm doing pretty well. I got 119 points so far, which mm. I think... Um, the guy who's running the, the you donation. Out Wisconsin schools, you're really in yeah. trouble. <laughs> well, I did. I, I did for you know. That's why I'm not far ahead. I had to, to pick so the Wisconsin got, schools. So we got Manny. Here, I'm huh? sorry. Okay. Um, Let's put that in their bracket. Okay, Westfall and Ryan. Now that's an interesting uh, position, uh, being vacated by Don Van Akron, who after losing the election last year was reappointed by the council. Uh, that's my district. I don't know. I you know the um, primary result, results, if I re remember correctly, were within 10 votes. Um, uh, Westfall ahead of Ryan, but not by much. Ryan has not participated in any of the, did not participate in the public forum pre-primary. I'm sure he will be at the, the, the forum uh, now. Um, any ideas? I just say when you got two new people, who's going to door to door? We don't know. If you don't mm -hmm. live in the district, I guess you don't know whether you got literature or not. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's a Sheboygan custom to look at lawn signs, and certainly Ryan is. is uh, I've not seen a Westfall yeah. sign anywhere. I mean, they may be out there. I just haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. Ryan's are all over the place, and of course he's got the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think and, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be real close. The name is simple, R Y A. Yeah. 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 And, and Westfall's Westfall. been in the news a little bit for yeah. his, uh, or the local station for the survey. Yeah. There you go. It'll be interesting. District three. Um, Did you predict? Did we? Oh, you said we don't know. I think it's really too close to call. I, I would probably, uh, I guess, in the interest of full disclosure, I know Jack and work with Jack. So, but I, I, I got a feeling Ryan's going to prevail in that race. It'll be close. I, I think, think it'll, it'll be Ryan. Be yeah, I think. Sorry, Jack. I think your point is well taken about um, how the election is run and and who you see at your door and and so forth. Um, Clyunis and Wolf are running in District Three. 
This was the most interesting result out of the primary with our incumbent being completely blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, Clyunas clearly, clearly a commanding lead even against the second place finisher. My bets are on Jean Clyunas. Sure. I think she'll I'd be agree. a fine addition to the council. I think she's very thoughtful and uh, I don't know Mr. Wolf and he may be just the same, but um, uh, I like Jean and I think she'll, she's intelligent and, and will work hard. Um, the fourth district brought us an interesting race um, with challenger James <coughs> Boren coming ahead of Dan Berg, the incumbent, by a significant, by a significant number of votes. And that's your district. How My is district. The, and how's that been playing? Um, well, first of all, stepping back, uh, you know, Joe Heideman, who was a, just a brand newcomer to the, to the city, lived in Sheboygan Falls all of his life, and, and a challenger also got a reasonably, I think, a good chunk, a good showing for his first time. So that gives you kind of the anti-incumbent sense. And so I can't imagine that those of us who voted for Joe are going to cross over and vote uh, for the incumbent. So I'm, I'm thinking we're going to have a new alderman there. Uh, you know, again, you go by lawn signs. Uh, clearly, uh, again, the, the challenger's got some resources. They're all over my neighborhood. Um, and I would say, I say we're going to have a new... My prediction would be we're going to have a new alderman. Yeah. Uh, Dan Berg, of course, is unchallenged. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Unchallenged in the, uh, in the um, uh, county board race. So he'll remain on the county board, but it'll be interesting. Um, District 5, uh, the incumbent Bonnie Serta against uh, Jeff Shuko. They were both victims, apparently, of some fairly nasty hate letter that went out um, that the DA is looking into. Um, was, was it Jeff? That's, or is it Larry? Is it Jeff? I'm not familiar with, with him. Oh, I Shuko, don't know. I think it's Jeff. Is it Jeff? Okay. Yeah. I, I thought I saw a sign that said Larry, but maybe yeah. I. Okay. But it's, a, it's an indication, sure. really, of how debased politics can get. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, of course, whoever did it, you know, sent letters out, hate letters about both of them. So, you know, it was sort of an equal opportunity hate crime, and, and, and maybe not a crime, but certainly an unpleasant reflection of, of the worst of American political life. There's so much that's good, but this right. is just... And why people don't eventually run is why do they want yeah. to subject them, possibly subject themselves to that type of behavior? Yeah. Well, Bonnie Bonnie works out here at the. She goes to school here and she has part time job here mm -hmm. and she really is interested in uh, serving the city and mm -hmm. I think she will continue to. Uh, I think she's probably campaigning in as mm -hmm. uh, best she can while working and going to school. Yeah. Uh, and um, she had a considerable lead over the. Over both of the uh, both of the opponents, so yeah, I think Bonnie sort of will I would, come back. I would go with Bonnie. Mm -hmm. um, in and Cal doesn't really care because <laughs> outside the sphere He's of influence here, <laughs> not in your district. <laughs> um, These people are working hard for your endorsement, and you're, and you're just sitting on the sideline right now. Come on now. You know, I think I've got my numbers mixed up actually for districts. I apologize. I think Clyunas is. Um, uh, actually in in District 5, I, I beg your pardon, District 3 is Jean Kittleson versus Scott Lewandowski. Uh, Jean Kittleson, I believe, is just coming back for her second term, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Scott Lewandowski is kind of a perennial candidate, awfully nice guy. I haven't heard much there one way or the other. I, my sense is the alder, the incumbent would... My, my sense would be, it's not my district, but I would think uh, that Gene is going to be reelected mm -hmm. pretty handily. So I, uh, I think um, in talking with people, rightly or wrongly again, in the first round of, of candidate forums, um, Gene is real thoughtful, uh, quiet, is not a person that's going to play to the cameras. Um, real careful about taking a position, wants to think it through, and and the candidates for him that was presented as you know who is he, where is she? She's mm -hmm. never, we don't know what, and I think it came across as being pretty mean spirited. I mean, it probably wasn't intended that way, I th but but it came across when people who were watched the forum and the people I talked to in the Piggly Wigglies and all that kind of thing around town was that you know the, the, it was a little tough on her, and I think she's going to get some sympathy, and, and there's going to be some backlash against that approach now. I haven't seen and heard too much in the next, we'll see when the next round of candidate forms how, how that's going to mm -hmm. play out. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Jean perceives herself and really does work at trying to be um, 
and I, again, in the interest of disclosure, know her pretty well, um, I think tries to, f tries to be a bridge builder in a, in a council that sometimes probably could use a couple of those. Um, so I, I got a feeling, uh, my sense would be she's going to be reelected. Um, District 7, Bill Steffen is um, leaving. Uh, Mark Hanna, who is uh, uh, just finishing up his term on the uh, Sheboygan Area School District School Board, is running um, against a young man who, um, as I understand it, we could probably say might not be a completely serious candidate, only in the sense of having brought a beer to the um, the televised uh, uh, debates that the... Uh... Again, I think the mistake was not bringing anybody else one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, if you're going to run for politics in Sheboygan, I think you've got to bring beer for everybody. You can't just have one for yourself. So, yeah. That's right. um, and I mean no disrespect to this young man. That may just have been his well, way I of am. kind of breaking the... Uh... I'd go to the forums. Yeah. Well, Marcus, yeah I'm a bridge builder, really Ken. Really well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to, I mean, if you're gonna... you know, trying to be, you know, kind to... <laughs> But uh, uh, I, I think Mark had a little bit of a gift here uh, in terms of this race. I think certainly uh, some of the other matches, let's put it this way. Yeah, but Mark's a little runs more. citywide or on the school, school, to school he's district. Well right? He's well known. Sure. He's, uh, his name is out there. I mean, and Mark they, likes they to be out there. They voted The seventh district people voted for him before for sure. school board. So Mark was, someone would say Mark is out there. Mark you know, is. No, he's, he's real. I mean, you're absolutely right. He's. You know, everybody knows him from the school board, uh, school board president, uh, yeah. and he's you know obviously been involved in a lot of service organizations and and involved in his uh, faith community and. So. That's a shoe in. Yeah. Mark's not going to break a sweat. Yeah. Well, everyone deserves a race like that from time to time. Yeah. Um, and finally, in the eighth district, we have uh, the incumbent Silas Vanderweel, who I think is running for his third term, if I'm not mistaken, against Dustin Havens, who ran last year in my district, apparently has moved since then. That's going to be an interesting one, and I think really pretty kind of hard to call at this point. The uh, primary results were very close, I think within, I think fewer than 10 votes, if my memory mm -hmm. serves me correctly. Uh, and uh, so I... Uh, I'm just not sure. Any ideas, thoughts on that one? Well, you'd think the incumbency would help, but you don't know as a result of uh, all the shenanigans that have yeah. gotten a lot of publicity as far as the institution of the Common Council mm -hmm. and how much anti-incumbency might uh, play in a, in a race. There are those who, who, no matter how long you've been there, if you're in there for one term, you're the incumbent, you're the institution. If mm -hmm. there's something wrong with it, um, whether it's spin off from the library situation or whatever, mm -hmm. people will say, well, we, we want change. Mm -hmm. But uh, incumbency is a very difficult thing to overcome. It really is. Yeah. And of course, last, last year, in, in 2005, I think there was a huge issue uh, that really propelled a whole lot of the race. And I'm seeing, in just in how these things are playing out, um, that this may just be a completion of that cycle. I think people were discouraged with how the city council was doing business a year ago, and I think clearly that is a sense that remains at least to some extent. When you have 24 people running for eight spots, uh, one, we've talked many times on this program about celebrating democracy, but, <laughs> but it also is a pretty clear indicator that, uh, that people are dissatisfied with how things are going mm -hmm. and, and looking for a change. So, well, we'll see how we do on the on the scorecard, and right. we're uh, going to leave that a tie. We're we going to pick <clears throat> too close to call. I think too it's too to close. To What's to great call. about this is that by the time this is actually shown, shown. <laughs> it's not going to influence anybody. anybody. Right. Yeah. I know. You can, say, you can say what you want because yeah, it's not going to say. Is. Okay. It's like Doctor Who in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you could also. I mean, how about turnout? I mean, what other thing? What other issues are there to encourage people to turn out? Well, I think Vanderwill is going to be reelected, but it's going to be real close. I think uh, because he lost narrowly in the primary, I think he's going to make a concerted effort to try to get his folks to the polls. Mm -hmm. Um, and with the referendum, I think I think he'll end up narrowly mm -hmm. squeaking out a win. Okay. Well, and but, um, and we're going to move on, I think, to talk about other issues that that may bring people to the polls. But before we move away from city politics, Christine Menard died yes. um, this past week, and I think all of us knew Chris, and she was um, a, a force unto herself and a unique. Uh, Quite wonderful person, Tom. You served yeah, on the I, city council I, with Chris. I served with Chris uh, and uh, 
May her soul rest in peace, bless her heart. She was a, a fun person. Uh, she, she loved politics, she loved the city. Uh, one year we sort of campaigned together. I mean, she in the second district, me in the first district. We'd meet at a restaurant and uh, have a good time. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, she, uh, when we were doing, uh, uh, remember the ambulance controversy? Well, how oh, could we Chris forget? Chris and I were, <laughs> you know, just like that on that. And she was very vocal and very supportive. And uh, uh, I think the, she's been kind of ill of late, I guess. Yeah. And uh, so I was kind of surprised uh, just to see it in the paper. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize she was that old. I think mm -hmm. she was 77. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, she has served the city well. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll miss her. We'll just harken back to the days when it was really hard to get a good cup of coffee in Sheboygan. Yes. And, <laughs> you know, I remember you could go to Coffee And yep. and buy your coffee beans. And uh, 15, 20 years ago, that was a, a pretty big deal. And uh, Well, that's true. Also, if you, and if you wanted to talk politics, she'd love to talk politics. You go into the store. Oh, yes. You make all kinds of deals in, <laughs> in, uh, no. in Coffee And. <laughs> Now, this is sort of an aside, but if I wanted to create a rumor, I'd talk to Chris. Because <laughs> she knew a lot of people, she talked a lot, and I'd say, well, I'm thinking of doing this. Uh -huh. And then pretty soon everybody knew I was. So, hey. Hey. Chris was the trail balloon. <laughs> yeah. So she was good, though. I liked Chris. Yeah. I, I enjoyed her tremendously. Um, yeah, I mean, I used to go in the coffee end, which she was actually one of the first. When you look at the waterfront now and all the different boutiques and things, mm -hmm. she really was one of the first people that really understood, you know, marketing and retail. And, and of course, she came out of New York City, came back from Sheboygan from New York City. Yeah, that's right. Where she did some of that. But she had kind of the first boutique store, and it was really, it really was the only, the only place to get really what we call now gourmet coffee. And I used to have a lot of talk with her. And then, of course, she held, you know, she held court over at Rupp's, you know. I saw her at, uh, oh, sitting at Rupp's, and, and she would hold court. Um, she'd have a martini sitting there, and... Uh, and a cigarette, and, <laughs> and she and I would sit and talk, and we'd have great, great, can of beer. great, great conversations. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's but right. she, she was kind of had one spot, and you know, she, she, I'd see her there every, you know, from time to time, and everybody could go up to her and talk to her. She was one of the most accessible, yes, she was. Uh, people that uh, you ever want to meet. So, so let's bring a little bit of fun back to the city council, <laughs> huh? It doesn't seem like it's much fun these days, and. Uh, it's well, two candidates campaigning together. I mean, you know, yeah. I, I, that's what I was struck when Tom was telling the story. Two candidates actually kind of, you know, enjoying yeah, each other's enjoying company and, and seeing people. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, just a quick aside, but uh, John Buchan, who, circuit court judge here yeah. for many years, was, was our neighbor for, for any number of years as well. And he tells the story when he and Nat Heffernan were both running for district attorney when they got back to Sheboygan after World War II. And old Mr. Buchan, Gustav, who had been in the legislature, I believe, for a protracted period of time. Um, he would, old Mr. Buchan had the car, and he would give the car to John Buchan and Nat Heffernan on alternating days. So that they could drive around, uh, they could drive around the county. And of wow. course, uh, Chief Justice Heffernan was, you know, well known for, you know, campaigning in every bar that he could possibly find. Uh, uh, in uh, and he tells the story. Uh, these are good storytellers of. Um, having campaigned hard all one afternoon, only to find out he had spent about three or four hours in Ozaki County. <laughs> he had crossed the line in, in his efforts, but, uh, but that's equal opportunity campaigning. So let's Campaign talk. momentum. There you it's, go. It's momentum. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, sometimes I think those days have passed and we're, we're the poorer for it. Um, the um, county has a, a the referendum is, yes. is uh, I think, going to draw a fair number of people to the polls. Um, the um, uh, ad advice to the county board as to whether or not citizens are willing to exceed the uh, allowable tax levy in order to support the, the nursing homes. Is, is that's how is, how is it worded? Does anybody... Well, there are two questions. One is on uh, exceeding the limit for the nursing Same homes, home. and the other one is just exceeding the limit for county expenditures. So it gives, I think, the people of choice of whether they want to be very generous or generous only in one area. Oh, so we're going to have two. We'll get to, we'll get to vote yes or no on two questions. Two questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as with all referenda questions, and I think we'll be talking about this in our next uh, show about statewide referenda, how you word 
mm -hmm. the, uh, items co clearly influences the outcome. Mm -hmm. I think the wording here is pretty straightforward um, and uh, pretty neutral. Uh, it does not reflect the complexity of the subject, but how could mm -hmm. a referendum question reflect yeah. that kind of that kind of complexity? So I think it will be interesting. And nine thousand people signed nine thousand plus signed a petition to have uh, an advisory referendum. So I, th my sense is that it will that it will turn the voters out. We haven't seen much in the newspaper. We're still a good two weeks, right? Yes. Mm -hmm out yeah. from the election. Um, but those of us who have been in contested elections know that the last two weeks are the toughest, and that's when things really do start to heat up and people start paying attention. Um, the, the, the I think it's been quiet so been far. It's been quiet. The ambiguity, is we don't know how much we're voting for if we exceed mm -hmm. the limit. Does, is there any dollar amounts attached to this? Like, well, I'll vote yes to exceed the limit, and that'll mean right. X dollars. I. It doesn't say. No. Well, the county board struggled. Um, the supervisor struggled and struggled to find language. Uh, they'd given up at one point, and then I believe it was Carl Adi who brought who brought it back. And the language is simple, but it's straightforward, Forward. and I think captures. And remember, it's just an advisory referendum, but captures the sense of how citizens feel about their nursing homes. Is it worthwhile? spending any more money than we would have to spend or that we'd, we would be allowed to spend under revenue caps. And uh, so I think it'll reflect the feelings of the, of the populace, of the voters, if not, certainly not the incredibly complicated realities of, you know, maintaining yeah. nursing homes and the cost and medical assistance reimbursements. Sunny Ridge and Rocky Knoll get the sickest of the sick and the most difficult of the difficult um, uh, patients and, and residents just because a number of private nursing homes just don't have the resources to you know to provide services to that mm -hmm. to that group of folks so it really is um, and and interestingly enough the population at Sunny Ridge is uh, I get the minutes from the Health Care Center committee meetings and that population is steadily going down to that target of 150 I believe um, so not kicking anybody out, but just in terms of, of not taking in new admissions. So, I mean, there is that, that diminishment, and, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I suspect the people who will vote yes on the exceeding the limit for the nursing homes are not going to be that concerned whether it's $2 million or $3 million. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just very committed to, committed the, to the county providing that, that level of care and not getting out of the business totally, which is, I think, a, a, a fear that many people had and the downsizing, you know, while it didn't set well with the true advocates for the homes, I think they're willing to come forth and say we're going to pay for what we need to pay for to keep these places open. Yeah. Let's it's get, what about another item? Let's get to Sheboygan Falls and <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, we should comment on the county board in the sense that there aren't many races, and that in a way is a shame. And maybe that will lend, hopefully, if there's a... Uh, a, a a smaller county board, mm -hmm. maybe we'll get to the focus that you have on the city council. It always amazes me how almost all the seats, well, all the seats are contested in the city. Here you have 35 county board seats, Six. only a handful are contested, and here you have a budget that's just million, many millions of dollars. And zero press coverage. Yes, yes. And Hopefully yeah. if they'd go down to 24 or 17, we'd get more focus on that, on that office and and the magnitude of the decisions that are made on the county mm -hmm. level. It's really yeah. a shame in a way. Yeah. Well, I see that I've completely lost control of hosting this show. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom is anxious to talk about uh, Sheboygan, Sheboygan Falls. Falls. Very democratic forum. forum. <laughs> no, that's it's a democratic okay. forum. I mean, isn't that obvious? I'm, okay I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. We'll throw the arbitrary host. <laughs> what we want to talk about. about <laughs> the gypsy host. No, we think. can just pass it around. But Tom. Um, no, I was looking for Cal. So that's his area. You live yeah. in Falls. Uh, yeah. That's right. So how are you going to vote? I saw the big... I mean, they're very dramatic. It's just a big red sign well, I, that says I, no on I, I Falls I think Yards. Sheboygan Falls deserves uh, additional facilities. Um, if you look at the size of the community, it's very close to Plymouth. And look at Plymouth. I mean, a number of elementary schools. They have a middle school, high school. And Sheboygan Falls, for years, did so much in so few fi in, uh, buildings. Maybe that's probably part of the problem is you try to catch up. You try to 
do multiple buildings within a short period of time and you get sticker shock from the electorate. Oh, but yeah, but yeah. The, the fact of the matter is a community that size should have, I think, a middle school, a high school, elementary schools. And what they're trying to do here is probably catch up for lost time. But, you know, like I said, it comes on the heels of a fairly new elementary school and it comes on the heels of people having uh, property tax bills that are, are with the cost of homes today uh, higher than they'd like them to be. Exactly. Well, the critics of the referendum are, I've, I've talked to a few of them, and they, they really are concerned that if the state starts playing around with funding mechanisms, they're going to end up, as you said, Cal, funding um, a lot of debt in a, in a short period of time, and then with revenue caps going to, uh, being forced to go to the public and saying we need to exceed the caps, and what happens if you can't, mm -hmm. and then you start to talk about cuts in, in yeah. programs and in staff and those kinds of things. Yeah. They really are in a tough spot because the, the building okay. is, I, I, I'm not walked through it, but I've talked to some, some staff who teach there and I've talked to some people who walk through there. Falls doesn't even, Falls doesn't even, when they have new parents coming in, they show them the elementary school, they show them the high school, and they sort of just say, oh, that's our elementary school over there. Um, I mean, our middle school. Um, they, they're really in a rock, between a rock and a hard spot because they waited, they waited, and now, now, you know, the opponents are saying we have to wait 15 years. Uh, 15 years for that older building, I mean, there you get, it's a tough call. Do you keep, yeah. you know, dumping money into a building that you know eventually is not going to, <clears throat> not going to pan out? And, and, and layered on top of that is there's some, all of this still residual unhappiness in the community about, you know, the football situation and, well, and how the board, board and the school board and how they make decisions. And yes, last night, I'm told this afternoon that last night they actually, the old board just before the election just uh, offered the superintendent another two-year contract. And I think there's going to be a real backlash to that. I think the timing there is just absolutely dreadful yeah. because it looks like the old guard is trying to uh, present the, a potential new guard with, you know, superintendent with a contract already. Mm -hmm. And so I think, there, I think that's going to make that referendum even more difficult mm -hmm. to pass, and I suspect it'll fail. Yeah, I w it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, and most referenda do fail the first Often time the first out, time, yeah. or the second, or sometime the third. So. My folks are from Antigo, a little town up north, and they have a beautiful new high school that took them about 40 years to get. Two lawsuits through the uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court, they I mean, it was an incredibly complex process because the community simply did not want to spend the money. And now they have a beautiful school, but nonetheless, they did not want to spend that money. And I think it's a big price tag for a middle school, $24 million. And as I followed the news, it started out at 13 and just kind of steadily went up. And so I, th I think there may be, I haven't paid close enough attention, but I think they're going to really struggle. Plus, again, a very contested um, school board race. There are six people running for three seats, and uh, and uh, I don't know how that's going to turn out, but uh, but I think that uh, I think that that's reflects the division in the community and the division over this issue as well as other issues. Yeah. And anytime you have that type of contention, it doesn't bode well for the easy passage of a, of a building <laughs> yes, referendum. Uh, it really doesn't. No. I think Sheboygan was a good a classic example of getting all the ducks in order to get the field houses and the other expansions you have here and get the vote you did. It was just a magnificently run uh, PR as well as uh, operational thing between the school board and the constituency out there. Well, the key in those in the 96 and also the past referendum for the Sheboygan Area School District, truly, I think you hit it on the head, there was just this incredibly wide, broad base of community support. Well, next time we'll know how our prognostications <laughs> happened our, and uh, we'll if see. If we're wrong, we won't mention a thing. We'll, yeah. we'll have a little poster. And, and, and then we'll post the N <laughs> NCAA uh, results and we'll just see just how good we are. Thanks. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.